Hello, it's Tom Donald from the London Contemporary School of Piano. Today I'm going to show you how to reharmonize a song on the piano. How to reharmonize the music. So what is reharmonization? Reharmonization is where you get the existing chords that build a piece of music and you simply change them. And this is such a great way to add your own creativity and your own stamp onto the music. Now a lot of people get a little bit scared of reharmonizing. They think, I could not possibly do this. I don't have the theory, I don't have the knowledge or the expertise to be able to get a famous song and change it and reharmonize it. It's just, how can I do this? Well, I've got some really good news for you. You don't have to be a theory expert to play around with the song and reharmonize it and completely create a new experience with the music. So, if you're a fan of our work at the London Contemporary School of Piano, you should head on over to our website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com, and ask for our free resources kit, which has so many great supporting resources that will help you with a lot of these videos that we put out here on our YouTube channel and um, it'll help you in general and support your playing, particularly the material we're covering today on reharmonization. This is such an exciting topic, so I can't wait to show you a couple of really cool tricks today that will just add a new lease of life to your piano playing. And I've had students who are beginners and intermediates who've taken on this stuff and have been able to put their own stamp onto the music straight away. So we're gonna start with a, let's start with a famous song like Fly Me to the Moon. So this is a song that's pretty well known and it uses a very standard chord progression that we hear in so many other tunes. Uh, some people call it a circle of fifths progression or a, a circle of fourths progression. You know, A minor, D minor, G7, C major 7, F major 7, B half diminished, E7, A minor. So that's a very well established uh, chord pattern that this piece has. So we're going to use a trick to reharmonize it, and I call this the 50% trick. And the 50% trick is where we get half of the chords and we change it to something completely different. So we're going to get the first chord, for instance, we'll keep the first A minor 7. Now the second chord, normally a D minor, we're going to change it. We're going to completely change it to a different chord. So what chord should we change it to? Well, this is again, don't take a theoretical approach with this because you'll do boring things if you actually take a theoretical approach. So even if you have really good music theory, sometimes that can get in your way. It can just make you too calculated and people don't necessarily like to listen to calculated music. Do you like to listen to calculated music? So we have an F in the melody. So let's just think about this in a really simple way. And you can do this with a pen and a paper if you want, if it helps you. Think of other chords that have an F in it. You know, like an F major has an F in it, or an F major 7, or an F minor. Or what about a D flat major? Now that's pretty cool. Or a D flat major 7. I quite like the D flat major or the D flat major 7 because uh, this is just personal taste and a lot of this reharmonization is entirely personal taste. That's also what's so cool about it. You really personalize the music. but. I like this uh, D flat major seven because the, the F in the melody is the third note of the chord, so it has a nice sweetness to it. So I'm gonna now play the beginning of Fly Me To The Moon with the A minor seven going to the D flat major seven. Let's see how that works. Ooh, that feels good. All right, so sticking to the 50% rule, I'm gonna have the normal G seven for the next chord. And now, instead of the C major 7, I'm going to change it. So we have an E here. And again, just think of chords that have an E in it. It could be an E7. It could be an E minor 7. But again, maybe that's a slightly bland choice because the chord is starting on an E. The melody doesn't necessarily have to be the note that's starting on the chord. It could be... Um, well, let's get a little bit more creative now. Let's go a little bit more wild. What about... I put a chord that doesn't even have an E in it. 
What about something like a B flat major seven? I just feel like major seven chords today. Must be because it's gloomy and rainy in London today. So I feel like some comforting major seven chords to cheer me up. Now, if I put the E that isn't in the B flat major seven, that transforms the chord to a B flat major seven with a sharpened fourth in it. That sounds great. And I haven't really thought of the theory. I just wanted to put a B flat major seven and then the E is uh, sitting in the melody. So, okay, let's recap the chord progression then. A minor seven, D flat major seven, G seven, B flat major seven with the, the sharp and fourth. Whoa, that sounds good. Let's do that again. So now we have a D. What other chord could I do with this or, or add here? Well, what about a G minor chord? Something a bit more different and moodier. You get the idea, I'm changing 50% of the chords. I don't even want to finish this. I want you to finish this. Why don't you make your own reharmonization now of Fly Me to the Moon? Why don't you email it to us? You can visit our website, Contemporary School of Piano, and say, hey, you've inspired me to do this version of Fly Me to the Moon. Share with us your harmonizations. You can put it in the chat. Share with us your reharmonizations in the chat. I mean, have some fun with it. There's no right or wrong. It's just finding ways to make it work and, and using your own personal taste. So the 50% rule, you can apply that to any song you want. And um, oh, you can do some wild things with the music. So fun. So I'm going to show you another harmonization trick. And this is a slightly different one because it's where we just create a chromatic scale in the bass, a moving down in semitones bass line and we just have to try and find chords that will support that and this is a really great way to get comfortable with reharmonization so it starts to feel something that you can make work in your plane rather than it being so abstract so I'm going to get a really simple melody that we've heard millions of times and we're all a bit sick of and that's really good melody sometimes to use when you're reharmonizing because you don't have a personal attachment to it. If you use a song that has a real sentimental value to you, you might feel like you don't want to change it, like it's sacrilege or something to change it. So sometimes it's good to reharmonize things that are a bit trivial. I'm going to use the melody Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Don't get me wrong, it's you know it's a great tune. It's part of our musical history and but you know, we've heard it a few too many times, right? I didn't think I'd ever be teaching Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on this channel. But here, you know, it's the first time for everything. So what I'm going to do in the bass, just as an outline, I'm going, the bass is going to descend in semitones to accompany the melody. And again, you can do this on any tune you want. I'm just choosing a tune that we have less, perhaps, emotional attachment to. Woo! So there's our chromatic movement. Now I'm going to find a way to create chords out of that. What sort of chords could I be harmonizing this with? C major 7. Now I don't just have to do parallel chords going down in major 7s like that. Though I could, but that's going to get a bit bland and predictable. So I could go C major 7, maybe a G with a B in the bass, B flat major 7, an F with an A in the bass, what about a D flat major with an A flat in the bass? What does that sound like? And it's not like I loved everything I was doing there. I was just trying different types of chords that would support that chromatic scale in the left hand and seeing if I could tie it in with the melody. 
And so this is a really, really useful trick. Um, maybe I'll do this an octave higher now and start on another note. I don't have to start on a C in the left hand. I'll start on an A flat in the left hand. So lots of great musical mischief you can you can have there. So you can do this with any song you want. You could get like a famous folk song. It's quite fun to try it on tunes like Oh Danny Boy. You know, just sort of famous folk songs, Kumbaya, pieces that we've heard many, many times before. Or you could just get an average pop song and make the average pop song really exciting by applying either that chromatic system or the 50-50 rule. The 50-50 rule is really, really great. But we don't have to necessarily do twinkle twinkle little star like that either. We can actually get a generic chord progression from another song and put it on top of twinkle little star or whatever the tune is. What if I got a very generic pop music progression like chord six, chord four, chord one, chord five? heard it a million times before, we've had, we have a lot of seminars and tutorials on this progression which you should check out on our YouTube channel and you should visit our website contemporaryschoolofpiano.com to get the supporting resources pack that goes with it but so this is a generic pop progression so I'm going to put Twinkle Little Star over that So just another trick you can apply, getting another chord progression and smashing it into another song. Um, and you could do it with a, you know, other folk songs, or maybe get Denny Boy. Let me try it on, on a song like Denny Boy. Um, again, we're gonna go to the key of E flat major, which chord six, chord four, chord one, chord five. I hope this works, because I haven't practiced it. <laughs> Let's see if it fits with Denny Boy. We're flying on the seat of our pants here. Works beautifully. Yeah, it just sort of it gives the melody a more contemporary feel, getting a very popular chord progression from today's music and putting it into a classic folk song. So harmonization can be played around with in so many ways. And I really encourage you to enjoy the piano, to take a creative angle with the piano, not to treat it like just an academic exercise, not to be a slave to the score. This is the ethos of our school, the philosophy of our school is that creating music at the piano not only should be enjoyable, um, because it's enjoyable most of the time, but let's face it, there are lots of challenges with piano. It's not the easiest instrument to play. There's lots of challenges. But you want to be able to converse with music on your own terms. You want to be able to converse with music in a holistic and creative way and not be a slave to the dots that other composer no matter how great these other composers might be, we want to think a bit like they get to think about music, and you can think about these things. There's no rocket science to getting a generic pop music progression that all these pop stars use and putting it on another song. So we are giving you permission to do things like this. You don't have to have imposter syndrome, you can just sit down and you can do it. It doesn't matter where, where you're up to in your musical journey. And if you need some coaching to really encourage you more and to inspire you more, you should visit our website contemporaryschool.piano.com and ask about our coaching programs. It doesn't matter where in the world you live, we will support you. If you're in London, we're fine. You can travel to our studios, but 
if you live in other parts of the world, we support students from all over the world with our courses and our programs and our coaching, and we're here to support you. Have some fun, try some reharmonizations, put some comments in the chat about your reharmonization. What did you change today? What song did you do a 50% change on? What song did you put a generic chord progression on? Let me know about it. Inspire, let's inspire each other with our ideas, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.